Bill's on the other side. You know, it's really disrespectful. It's so disrespectful that you're not prepared for the podcast. Do you know that? Says the one that first yeah. got the book. Yeah? That we're supposed to I'm supposed to do. read out of the Necronomicon, and I forgot it. I'm sorry. It's not my fault the Demon Lord wanted it back. What are you going to do? Tell him no? No. Sorry, dude. You can't have your book back. I'm yeah, just going to read in Sumerian, too. You know what? I can't, because I don't have the book. But, you know, what am I going to do? Nothing now. Nothing. This is the end. This is the end of the podcast, because we can't do anything. Because Literally nothing. There's nothing we can talk about. No. At all. <laughs> uh, oh, God. Could that mic st- <laughs> It's like so erect. It's just like a straight line of metal that you're stroking. Ew. If you if you had an AI, if you had like a robotic servant, not servant, but you know like a you know like an AI <laughs> like a butler, like an AI butler. It's kind of the same thing, but they get paid. Ooh. Would you fuck it? Would you fuck a robot? Probably not, because it's going to be, like, hard inside. What if it's not, though? Next question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what would you do? I don't know. So, yes. That's a yes. You'd fuck. If you had enough time with it alone, you think you'd, you'd, you'd start? If it doesn't feel like silicone, then maybe. It's, like, really soft and moist. And it reacts, and then it's, like, Ooh! want to pleasure... If it sounded like that, then hell no. That's how it sounds. It's just like, eh, eh, eh. eh. (laughs) Coming now. But then it's like a full, it's like a fire hose. Of oil. Yeah, the cleanup for that. Then you'd have to, and then like when the government comes over to check on you and your robot, they're like, hey, we just want to know how you're doing. You're one of the few people with a beta robot. Just wondering, uh. If everything's okay and you're like answering the door and it's just a little cracked and you're like, yeah, it's all fine. Everything's okay. Like, Can we come check on the robot? You're like, the robot's okay. <laughs> He's just recharging right now. No, we have to come inside and inspect the robot. Uh, do you have a warrant? We don't have a warrant. You signed a contract and they just fucking push the door open <laughs> and all of the walls are covered with oil and we're like, you fucked it, didn't you? You fucked the robot. And we're like, I'm sorry. You've had it for six. Hours. He's like, it was so soft. (laughs) Oh my god, that'd be awful. And the robot's just like fucking shaking in the corner, and like spitzing fucking sparks and shit. Broke it. You broke it. You broke it because you were so rough with it. Poor robot. Yeah, and then they have to give you a new one, and they just give you a Roomba next time. That bitch can suck, though. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to episode 50. <laughs> oh, oh, shit, dude. Oh. Hello. <laughs> uh, are you being okay? Are you, like, staying in your house? You're not going... You're not breaking shit, are you? No. <laughs> I'm not doing anything like that. That's Staying responsible of safe. you. If you... Isolated. Do you feel like going out and, like, walking the streets? No. There's a curfew in Fort Worth now. There is. It's at 8, eight o'clock. Yeah. But, you know, when this podcast is uploaded, the curfew will be lifted, so... When you read... When you listen to this, don't freak out. There's no curfew. <laughs> <laughs> and if you were listening to this two years from now... And there is a curfew, we're fucked. <laughs> I mean, because that means shit didn't get better. <laughs> yeah, it's like they put a curfew up so fast for this. Oh, so I like, know. But like for COVID, it's like, oh, we'll react really slowly to this. Yeah. We'll never do a curfew. It's no. like. But there wasn't violence weird. because of COVID. There was death. <laughs> yeah, but it's not like. It's, they shut down the bar. They shut down the shit that you do at night. People don't normally protest 
one. Well, true. And two, like, yeah, I mean, like, the, anything, like, a bar was closed. Those are, that's shit you do at night. So they just closed all that stuff. They're so packed now, like, it's insane. A bar? Yeah. I'm sure. I'd like to go to one, but I'll still wait. Like, you know that one we went to in Azel? Mm-hmm. It was bad. <laughs> the smoky one. We played pool with your coworkers at Cash America. Did we? Oh, yeah, that pool place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, driving past there, it's, like, so insane. People are parking in the field next to that. I remember that. It. Holy shit. Like, I barely remember that, but I remember 70 that. 70 cars there. And really? Kind of, yeah, it's insane. And they said something. There's, like, 20,000 new cases. And you're like, no shit. Or... From what I heard, they're still they're bullshitting the numbers so hard. Where they're like, "Oh, the fucking guy got in a car crash, had cold symptoms, COVID death." And you're like, "That's <laughs> they not really the same know thing." To believe, honestly, you don't know what to believe. No, I'm just saying, like, you really don't know, like, in general. No, that's why I'm trying to fucking stop. How trying media. to stay away from all that? Yeah. Look. Our podcast isn't in any disrespect because we've been uploading with like we haven't talked about anything. We haven't talked about like the protests or like the the COVID or anything. Just because we're trying to keep it happy. Yeah, just because we're trying to keep it like fucking chill, dude. Because when and I get it, but like they've like blacked out all of like the social media and stuff Mm -hmm. right now. Like all of Instagram is just like. Like, no one's uploading anything because they want a voice. I, I totally understand that. That's cool. And I, I'm contributing in whatever way I can, too. Um, but, you know, like, I, I think people are really stressed out right now. And mm-hmm. they do kind of still want an escape. Like, we can't just, like, not provide that, I guess. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know. I mean, because, like, you can still donate and still protest and, yeah. you know, uh, share whatever you can. Um, mm-hmm. But in the end like are looking for like if okay so say you had like say you had like a shit day and you're having a shitty day and not just because of this but you're having a shitty day yeah and then like the place you turn to that like gives you comfort provides nothing Mm -hmm. then you continue having a shitty day yeah i get that and at the same time i get that like you know we should redirect our focus Mm -hmm. um but if you're if that's the type of day you're having and uh, like doing activist stuff isn't really going to help that feeling of like loneliness and yeah. um like pain or depression or whatever um <clears throat> so i mean I, I see both sides i mean as with everything there is a gray yeah there's always like a devil's advocate <sighs> yeah there should be for literally everything so we're going to continue doing the podcast and talking about dumb shit and uh, you know you don't have to watch it if you don't want to but you know we'll still upload it mm-hmm. <laughs> excuse me but you know in the end we love you like so fucking much i don't care who you are i love you with all my heart yeah like outside the podcast like we care about the current events and we're not like blowing oh, them off for sure not thinking that they exist because i mean they do and it's so right that all this stuff is happening in such a wrong way like it's sad that it's come to this but it needs to happen yeah 100 like, yeah like it's 2020 and there's still like so much inequality and racism for sure and for sure like we're both white um horrible. i mean i'm half hispanic but like that doesn't i feel like that doesn't even like accredit me anything and you know i love like my family and stuff i love everybody but yeah. it's i for sure don't experience any sort of racism whatsoever. Yeah, None. Exactly. And um, I was bullied like a motherfucker when I was growing up mm-hmm. because one, I was Hispanic, uh, and two, I was the poor kid at my school. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I was like stupid bullied. Like every single day, I was getting like pushed down and beat up. Mm-hmm. I was people were throwing fucking footballs at me and shit. Um, like you name it you know fights in the middle mm-hmm. of like the playground i would go to detention the other kid wouldn't so for sure mm-hmm. um you know like i know what it's like to be downtrodden as like a human i have no idea what it's like to be seen differently um yeah now like i have Looks- tats and like you know i look like a fucking emo kid and you know i don't i don't know what it's like to be seen singled out, singled out. Yeah, yeah 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 
and like every time I've gotten pulled over, I guess it's been sh- they're assholes about it. But like I always feel like that's just like a, how a cop is, yeah. um, which sucks. But um, you know, like I totally support like everybody you know who's like going through some shit, and you know it fucking sucks. But you're right. It now is the time. Like no matter like the shit has to change. No matter yeah. what. No matter what it is. Any amount of oppression. Period mm-hmm. has to be changed. It doesn't matter who is being oppressed. If yeah. you're being oppressed, there has to be equality. Yeah. There's like, I am so huge on unity and love and acceptance. And literally everybody has mm-hmm. to be like, we have to eventually all be kosher with everybody. Also realize that as the flip side, that we're, we're actually like not old at all. Mm-hmm. This is a very new civilization. We are very fresh to the universe. Mm-hmm. Um, so we still have like all these like primal separation mindsets where like a lot of what we do in our day-to-day life is very primal Mm -hmm. uh you know like we fucking all our sports are primal every sport is like super fucking primal we're still into these things and that doesn't uh exonerate or like you know exempt anybody from like Mm -hmm. terrible acts of violence and stuff but um on a flip side there's always like a pecking order to things not that there should be. Yeah. Um, things should be shaped like a circle instead of like a fucking triangle. triangle. And, you know, there's always a pecking order to like every structure. Your job mm-hmm. has a guy who tells another guy who tells another guy who tells yeah, you what to always do. Always a ladder. Yeah. Yeah. And you're always fucked. And um, every system in this current <laughs> earth that we live in, a hundred years from now, I hope it changes. Mm-hmm. But right now, everything is like structured where someone is telling somebody else. Yeah. what to feel and think and do and don't you fucking dare do anything else yeah. and uh the government and the police system and your job that you have is no different yeah and um it's just kind of like how open and um equal that structure within the structure treats you mm-hmm. so like at my job we're really really nice like every 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 structure above is very understanding like i've met like my higher ups and they're super cool our ceo is super awesome and um she's really respectful and etc um Mm -hmm. and like they do whatever they can to like make everybody seem equal and like um you know like they're helping out a lot throughout this like Mm -hmm. covid shit but um, there are plenty of systems that we like work with currently today that are really fucked up. So mm-hmm. until we get to like the core of the issue, it, it'll take a long time before things start really changing. Yeah. Because we have like a governmental problem clearly where there is, yeah. it's near impossible to make any sort of change without being completely radical about it. Like we are now mm-hmm. with like the, the riots and protests. And we have to do that to get anything done yeah because they didn't listen when like the whole kneeling during the national anthem and stuff mm-hmm. like that was just ridicule then yeah called stupid uh-huh. put down upon and it stopped <clears throat> and now that all of this writing and stuff happened everybody's like well if y'all were peaceful then oh, yeah. maybe we would do it but it's really like you didn't fucking do it last year and the year before when right. all this shit happened constantly yeah but now that we're actually putting our foot down and they're saying we want equality. Yeah, yeah, for sure. To not be murdered and for yeah, 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 like yeah for sure. Just, and I think I think it has to do with like this sense of silence. Mm-hmm. It's like when you're the the quieter you are, the less anything is like nothing comes from someone who's complacent. Yeah. Nothing comes from someone who sits around and does nothing. Um like and that's what it's like to be a kid you know mm-hmm. like when your parents like sit around and, like you know if you're abused by your parents or you know you're grounded what do you need to do you get yeah. grounded you just fucking sit in the corner you're like i, I can't do anything mm-hmm. you know and eventually you gotta like you grow up and you step up um you learn that like we all learn that there's nothing i hope we all learn that there's nothing to be done if you like yeah. stand idle so even though it it sucks that businesses are being broken and destroyed and people are getting injured. Uh Um, it's kind of like, uh, it's for the better cause. It's for a better cause. Yeah. It's like, there's like nothing gained without sacrifice, you know? Yeah. And that being not the lives of people, but like 
it, it, it appears that in this system, not much has changed without a little bit of give. Yeah. Um, which really sucks, but it, that's part of what needs to be done is like the structure needs to change. Mm-hmm. We need to stop living in a world where every system within the system is like a pecking order. Mm-hmm. Every system from presidential ha- and they're trying to like they say it's like a, a check and balance or whatever yeah. yeah but when you look at that that's also a fucking triangle too yeah. you know in that yeah. sense where it's like you know everything is like oh you got like all these fucking dudes and there's way more of them than there are of whoever else uh-huh. and like you know currently it's like there's more republicans than there is democrats or whatever mm-hmm. than like that in itself is cause of separation because yeah. there's two it's called a false dichotomy it's a flaw in logic mm-hmm. so when you believe that there is only two you make irrational decisions to make poor decisions yeah. so for instance it's biden and trump it's a shitty decision no one should have to pick between two people who are like they're both kind of idiots honestly yeah. you know and uh i've heard some of like biden's recent speeches and you're you just kind of like facepalm and the other one is tweeting yeah. so it's like we're both lose lose it's a lose lose <laughs> false dichotomy yeah you can't tell me that there's only two choices what we need to do is stop having the one choice mm-hmm. we should have it as a structure of people who check each other mm-hmm. you have one person from every single country and then like that's the fucking round table it's mm-hmm. like the knights of the round and then everyone needs to check each other before things are passed it goes through all of them yeah. and then we have someone who checks them and those are a mix of people it's not just one fucking popularity contest yeah. guy and what it needs to be isn't fucking 16 people who have a shit ton of money it needs to be everybody who is very well educated it needs to be yeah. one guy who's a genius economist mm-hmm. there needs to be one guy who or, or girl who needs to be like a genius in psychology a genius and whatever and then you they just and that might take a little while before they come yeah. to a conclusion but what happens is that the smartest people connect with each other scientists are in there and fucking you know whoever yeah, it's not a money game of- instead of a money grab yeah. where it's a bunch of fucking people who are really close-minded and who are making decisions for people who are not like them at all yeah that's the problem the problem is that there's a there's a big structure issue that needs to be reallocated mm-hmm. and v for vendetta type shit man we if this is how it goes down this is how it goes down yeah. and we we rip it down and look it some things aren't made clean by not making a mess yeah. you know like you're gonna you gotta gut the house if you want to keep the house there but you want to like fix the house right yeah. like you want a new kitchen kind of break down that wall mm-hmm. you're gonna have to rip out that old oven yeah. and you know it won't be like a clean fix but it it'll get done eventually you know it's fucked up but that is probably what's gonna happen yeah and you know people are gonna get metaphorically caught in the crossfire but through that catalyst we will erupt into change i mean it's like they say it's like you know you don't fear the government you fear the people and there's way more of us and so shit has to change for the Mm -hmm. better and that's why i don't want like kids and shit man like i want to like i don't want to bring my kids into this type of shit no nope i had my grandma ask me yesterday i was like you want kids and i'm like there's no way right now right now Mm mm-hmm it's just it, not only is it not really safe it's just i like i struggled growing up and i grew up in the two in the 90s and then the 2000s yeah that was rough um but now is also a rough time maybe, yeah. maybe there's no good time but maybe that's the point yeah. it's like you can't m- make new shit without fixing the old shit yeah so otherwise you get the iphone it's just a little better every time. Yeah. What if there, it just needs to change completely? Mm-hmm. And like, maybe we don't need to do that. Why don't we just rewrite it? Like, you can keep making the Nissan Altima. Great. But if we're still using oil and gas, we have a problem still. Yeah. You never got to the source of it. Yeah, it's a faster, more reliable vehicle than last year's model. You know what that tells me is that we haven't gotten to the core of what everybody really wants. Yeah. They're like, oh, batteries have to be recycled so there's no might as well keep it the same it's mm-hmm. like great so in a hundred years when your grandchildren are like still here and you're dead they got to fix your bullshit yeah exactly and here we are you know so trying to fix the bullshit yeah and 
everything is just like a remnant of something else Mm -hmm. and nothing is being resolved and i totally support like standing up and pressing your voice and look if a little bit of glass has to break i kind of understand it i don't like it i don't like that anyone gets hurt or like things are breaking and like you know but it's stuff yeah it's stuff um yeah i mean sometimes you got to throw the remote when you're upset yeah stuff can be rebuilt bruises can be healed but like death and abuse is are perceivably to us is permanent yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, maybe it's not but that doesn't mean that everyone has to get caught in the crossfire yeah. you know um even if like incarnation is a thing you don't want to blow it no. you don't want to waste it especially for each other i mean or especially because we're close-minded and you know we're not standing up against the people who tell us to do things. Yeah. I mean, there's like, oh, what is that? That experiment. I mean, there's a couple of great experiments. There's that mm-hmm. one with like the prison experiment, the Harvard prison, is it the Harvard prison experiment. Have you heard that? Uh-uh. Fuck, dude, that's so good. So they do this doctor and, you know, I don't know the name of it. The doctor had a group of students. Uh, mm-hmm. he, he basically tricked all these students to believing that they were going to get arrested so they get arrested and they get brought to a fake jail that was like it was like sponsored by the campus right mm-hmm. and, it, and this doctor guy who was a professor or whatever was running it and so it was like a fake jail of like six people mm-hmm. he had other students um be the officers oh. and so the officers basically like kept track of the the jail of the the jail and like the the prisoners mm-hmm. and then they like would feed them and stuff and whatever over time he studied that these people became oppressors so people who were like super normal really sweet blah blah mm-hmm. blah when they were given that power they started enforcing that power mm-hmm. and were like hurting people and so they were like they had cameras and stuff, and they they were like talking shit to these people, being super rude. There's like it's it's all on file. You can like mm-hmm. see it online. Um, I don't know if all the video footage is online, but for sure all of like the study is online. Um, I learned it in that uh, Malcolm Gladwell book. Mm-hmm. He explained it, but basically, even off camera, like they were uh, like oppressing and abusing these these prisoners who were people like they were like classmates they were Mm -hmm. familiar and these people who weren't like they weren't cops or anything before this but they became like this inflated uh like um service to self Uh like bad attitude and what happened man what was crazy they were even doing stuff when they weren't recording where they were like they weren't they were like okay it's over you know seven o'clock or whatever let's go they were still oppressing these people. They were still being shitty outside of the acting. Huh. And so they were told to act, but then they weren't told to beat anybody or anything. It just happened, right? Yeah. So the professor who was running it invited another professor to, like, observe and, like, and was like, hey, it was a girl. And he invited this girl to come see this lady. And she was like, okay, okay. So she, like, was explained how it worked and blah, blah. And then she had heard a a lot about the guards Mm -hmm. and she was like oh yeah this is the guard this is this guard this guard and the other guards are talking shit about this one guard they have Mm -hmm. they're like oh yeah tommy or whatever his name was was like he he's like the most fucked up they call him big bad or whatever and they're like what what and like you know they're all talking shit about this one guy who's like super evil and they're like wow holy shit then she talks to a dude and he's super sweet And, you know, she's talking to him. She's like, wow, he's real smart. Nice, blah, blah, blah. All right. Let's see the footage. And so, like, you know, they go about their business. Mm -hmm. The fucking guy who she was talking to who was all sweet and shit was that Tommy guy. And he was fucked up. And she was like, I never would have guessed that was the dude. And then so she was like, Mm -hmm. this has to stop. For what reason are you still going on? Because the study has conclusive data. The, you're, you're just oppressing these people. And then the professor who was running it was like, holy shit, I'm in on it too. That like, I didn't even realize that like, they really wouldn't be doing this if it weren't for me. Mm-hmm. And like, I, I think I've let this get to me. And so he cancels it. Everyone's released. And you know, 
um, everything gets set free. But he had to have someone who was completely naive to the situation yeah. come in and be like, "What the fuck are y'all doing?" Yeah. To see that we were alive. That and that's that's like what is basically happening. I think in like our own, mm-hmm. our circumstance with like power structure now things are way out of hand dude yeah with like politicians police military everyone's like i mean think of how the military is where they show you like dog shit yeah. and they just justify it by you being a better guy like a better soldier yeah, like, it's like really is that really what it is is that why you're making him like roll around in the dirt and like all this other shit that they do yeah, like no no, like, no 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 fucking abuse <laughs> it is abuse and we write it off as like, like becoming oh, a, man, a man or that's yeah. their job yeah or whatever well maybe Maybe that has to change. What if we don't need war? We don't need war. Um, I mean, people say we need defense. I get that, but as Jim Carrey says, like you, you can't know peace until you like take off the armor. Mm-hmm. Like, because otherwise, you're always going to have your reserves. Yeah, you know, it's having some bit of faith, and you know, maybe now's not the time. But it's gonna ha- it's gotta happen eventually. Yeah. You want equality, you want like unity among all people. That's mm-hmm. got you gotta take it all down. I mean, it's fucked up. And then if if we all explode, we all explode. You know, eventually that could happen. But yeah. we have to work towards like a whole world of peace. And mm-hmm. it doesn't happen if we all are still oppressing like that. Like that show. We have to have more people like that lady who come in and say like this is oh, something's see, wrong here. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, that was a mouthful. <laughs> it's just <sighs> insane. Like, yeah. Couldn't think it could get worse, and now here it is. <laughs> this year, man. This yeah. year. Something up with this year. Maybe it's like some fucking big change in this. Like, a, like the. What am I trying to say? Like, Raw talks about there being, like, a, a transition from third to fourth, right? Mm-hmm. And then, like, the Earth is moving from its density. The yeah. density is changing. And in some way, man, this really could be, like, it. And it's, like, a dense... It's a change in the people. Mm-hmm. And the people are... Want something different for themselves. Yeah, they're and fucking done. We're done. <laughs> and that's, like, a change in ourselves, man. We're, like, going through this, like, density change mm-hmm. where we want more positivity. And we are moving towards that like more towards the light you know mm-hmm. we're trying to be enlightened yeah. you know so we're working for i think that's probably what 2020 really is mm-hmm. i mean that doesn't explain the covid shit but a lot of stuff is happening like yeah so it's this weird it's super weird transition and then, spiritually speaking this is a fucking weird year yeah, yeah it's a mess to say the least and it's, it's only been five months yeah it's just now june yeah 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 it seems like so much longer like to this whole outbreak it just seems so long because we're just stuck doing nothing so days drag by but it really hasn't been Mm -mm. as long no this this year is zooming yeah yeah i'm saving for a house and it's it's going quick (laughs) i'm like i'm already looking at houses and shit looking at furniture and i'm like what the hell <laughs> this yeah. happening quick yeah. and the year's already almost halfway over it's almost my birthday dude and when i know it's my birthday i'm like oh fuck because it's my birthday and then it's christmas and then it's my birthday and then it's christmas because yeah. it's like middle and then end and it's weird it's weird how quick it's going by and i really thought i would be like cooped up and bored I'm just making the best of it yeah. i'm like painting more and stuff you got to yeah, I play a lot of Call of Duty. The fucking lot of Call of Duty. I'm playing a lot. Of, you see me on Xbox. I'm always <laughs> playing Call of Duty. Oh, funny's on Call of Duty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Never mind. Yeah, I'm almost at the end of the battle pass, so it's like you could always ask me to play any game, and I'd rather play that. No, I'm replaced by Call of Duty. No, no, I mean like you could invite me to play your game, fucking Dead by Daylight, and I'd, I'd play that. Yeah, sure. There's really no reason I wouldn't. I've been I played COD with Oscar twice. Mm-hmm. And that was cool. We got the very first game we played, we got first place. Oh wow. Yeah, in Battle Royale we got first place. And it was like we were like, 
oh shit we won nice and then we just kept playing like it didn't matter mm -hmm. and i got like a i got a new like gamer tag thingy for it and and then they, they were just like all right let's queue in for another game we're like i was like do you guys win first place like all the time like what is happening <laughs> and you know we all did really well it was super weird it was cool though yeah i've been trying to play dead by daylight lately but it's been like actually fucking dead in by daylight <laughs> yeah and by nighttime but uh i don't know what's up with it like matchmaking is so fucked as of late because of the update do, wait did they already add the graphics update no, no it's oh, okay. gonna be later and they're adding crossplay, so pc and ps4 oh, and all that that's what's up i mean because we can do that now that's new technology yeah if you could do it on Call of Duty, you could do it with fucking Dead by Daylight. That'd but, be nice because then we can have way more people and then the queue will suck less. Yeah, they hopefully. said like, uh, like during their big four year anniversary, they said there's like a million players playing every day. So, I mean, there's people playing the game. It's just the fucking servers are so wonky sometimes. And mm -hmm. matchmaking is so fucked up because you can be like a level 20 killer, which is the worst. And then you get spawned in with level like five to one rank oh no people and so you're just getting destroyed and that was i felt gone. like that was happening in the beginning yeah because we were getting fucked up in the beginning i was like this game's kind of stupid and then... yeah and like it can be vice versa like you can be low level survivors and get ranked with like a always 4k uh villain and shit like mm. it's matchmaking it's just really weird mm. but I saw some gameplay of the, the, like, four hours worth of gameplay from that guy I watch on YouTube play, and it looks amazing. Pyramid Head looks really fucking cool. Dude, that's and so, does so sick. Heather. And people were complaining up to, like, the developers that they spoiled Silent Hill 3 for them because they were calling uh, Heather Cheryl, which is her actual name, but she's um. two souls combined. So she goes by Heather because she didn't know she was named Cheryl. Yeah. So they were like, "Is that that? Why is that why they need her to be like sacrificed at the end? Why she needs to like? Yeah. They're trying to get her. Yeah, it's they're trying to Cheryl. actually get Cheryl. Yeah. Uh, I never finished that one. I stopped after I got the wine bottle on that one puzzle. You need to like, oh yeah, put something sewers. in the wine bottle yeah. and then you need to like pour it in somewhere else. Yeah, the gas. I got mad about that because I was like, "Where the fuck do I put the gas?" And I had a wine bottle and I was like, "I know. I don't know if I would have thought of that." It was in a generator. Yeah. It's a stupid puzzle. I think I stopped playing right after that. It's so good, though. Yeah, I mean, I'd watch you play it if you played it after that part. I can beat the game in, like, three and a half hours. That's so. probably true. Yeah. It's really short if you know what to do. But if not, then you're going to every door that's locked. That's, and locked, that's me. And locked, and locked, that's and locked. me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then running around, and then that game's real slow, and you have to, like, swing. and right, Everything combat. about Silent Ooh. Hill is very, like, slow. Yeah. Why would you, that game is like 20 years old get over it oh i know people are like there's like a giant war in the comments like going back and forth between like it's fucking super old grow up yeah and still it's a spoiler like if you haven't played it by now then why the fuck are you like <laughs> i don't know yeah it's not that big of a deal if you haven't played it and it's been out in like what 13 years i think yeah it's 14 years yeah, I don't even... Just, I, I can't think of a game where it's, like, there's a big spoiler. There, I mean, I'm sure there's something, but, like... It's... it's it, if the, You got, like... How long do you got? Like, how long... What are you just yeah, gonna... Yeah, what is that time period you, of where, like, where how it's long, a spoiler and then where it's just regular information? Information, right, right, right. With, like, uh, with Avengers, yeah. where it's, like, you know, the snap and then uh -huh. fucking Spidey dies. How long do you wait? Before you release that information to the public. I think people that call out spoilers, it shouldn't even fucking matter to them. Because they, if they were like an actual fan, they would have already played it or experienced it or watched it. Yeah, maybe you got, oh, you got maybe, okay, so I'm going to say you get one fucking month. You got one month to play the game, watch the movie or whatever. Mm -hmm. You got one month before I fucking talk about it. Because <laughs> there's no fucking way... I'm going to wait more than that no. to, to have a casual fucking convers conversation with somebody. Be like, oh, dude, man. Was oh, I, I don't want to worry about some guy being like, what? what? Man, watch that shit. Yeah. Like, like, oh, I've just been waiting for it to be on Redbox. <laughs> 13 years to play the latest one. No. That came out. And no. then 
someone comes up to me and says, Laura fucking dies, I'm not going to be like, <gasps> what? No, <sighs> bitch. That shit day one and beating yeah. it on that weekend. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, yeah, I mean, if you spoiled Final Fantasy VII right now, how could I be mad? Yeah. How could I be mad that Aerith died? Oh, spoiler, guys. <laughs> yeah, fucking, yeah. Come on. You can't be upset about shit like that. It's no. it's that's a good that's a big one. Aerith uh-huh. dies. Yeah, Aerith dies. So don't put all your shit into Aerith. I can just keep her alive. Uh-huh. Do enough to keep her alive and then right before that scene oh, and let her die. Strip that bitch and let Strip. her die. Strip that bitch of all the fucking all the rings and the materia and then <laughs> and let her die with nothing on there. But Resident Evil Zero. Yeah, that's a good one. That's uh-huh. a spoiler. Yeah. Um Look, I'm helping you out. You guys get split up. Don't give everything to Billy like you had been. Because yeah. he's going to get fucked up. And he's going to get, like... For a while, there's, like, not, like, a box nearby. Uh-huh. It's that you go with Billy and you're like, Oh, I, I'm going to give him the shotgun, the rocket launcher, and, like, the yeah, good pistol. That shit, like, evenly. Uh, mm, yeah. Yeah. And then when it's about to happen, which it doesn't... There's no hint at it. Yeah. Give him all... Give her all the shit. And then uh-huh. let him fall with nothing. And then that's what I had to do because I think uh, my friend Gage told me about that. He was mm-hmm. like, when this happens at this spot, give get rid of everything that Billy has and give it to Rebecca and like do that scene with nothing. And I was like, just let him have the pistol. I think it was like, give him the bad pistol. Yeah. I was like, okay. And then they got split and I was super grateful. That's good advice. Yeah. That's a good spoiler. That's a good spoiler. Like- they both make it out that's a spoiler they both yeah. make it out <laughs> yeah they don't make out they both make it out but then she does resident evil one right after that yeah and so she's just on the hill and then she's like i guess i'll just go to another mansion <laughs> yeah that would suck now to think of it like two mansions yeah. in a row bitch yeah at least she had chris in the second one yeah i don't know if they get split up i you know what as much as resident evil is like my favorite one of my favorite games I don't know if I've really played all the way through Chris's campaign. Yeah. Not a real fan, I know. I don't know. But I, I feel like I'm playing Jill. the same game twice. I just like playing as Jill because she's beautiful. He's scratching in his bed because he's angry. <laughs> God damn uncomfortable dog bed. <laughs> Motherfucker. They should upgrade. <laughs> Rich ass bitch. <laughs> Yeah, as if he had any concept of money, like a dollar is rich, <laughs> because he has none. If you have more yeah. than one, you have... Oh my goodness, he he's just going to fucking eat it and then shit it out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what got you into this clown thing? I don't even know. You just That one right there is fucking creepy. The doll? Yeah. Hey, cute, look at him. Uh-uh. That's a oh. creepy fucking doll. I got some clown stuff, and then Anthony was like, here's some more. And then I was like, okay, I'll get some more, too. Great. <laughs> Thanks. But clowns are cool. No, they're not. Do you like the circus? Yeah, I love That's watching fucked animals up. get abused. I was about to say. <laughs> I was like, whoa. No. Wink. I haven't been to the circus in forever <sighs> since animals were getting abused. Yeah, once but I found it's like. No, I always kind of hated the circus. Yeah, I think the only animals that really liked it was probably the dogs. Everything else was like... Yeah, they gotta fucking beat them into submission. It's not like they're fucking well-trained. I mean, they're probably not, like, the most reputable people. Yeah, I would think that... I I remember when I was a kid and there were circuses, my mom would always ask me to go with my grandma and, like, my aunts and shit. Uh I never once wanted to go. I don't think I ever wanted to go. Because the toys suck. Like those little like light things. I'm never going to use that again. <laughs> I think I bought like maybe one or two when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, this toy's stupid. I'm never going to use this mm-hmm. like again. Um, and then it's just like everything smells like kind of like shit. Yeah. While you're like in, in the stands. Mm-hmm. The one time I remember having like a decent time. I hung out with this kid Jackson. And he kept, he, w- he was this kid who had one you know how like you grew up oh, okay so here's a better conversation you want you know how you grew up with kids and that one kid was like you just knew him and he wasn't really your friend 
but he did something that made him like iconic. It was mm-hmm. like his iconic trait. This kid flipped his eyelids back. So you know, peel them inside out and you can see the inside. He did it all the time. He thought it was super funny. And so everyone always asked him to do it. And like, I never really hung out with that kid. I went to the circus once with him and that mm-hmm. was like, I don't even remember why that happened. And that was his thing was flipping his eyelids back. Another kid, Gregory, I grew up with was a super tan kid and he, he would eat anything, anything you could ask him to put anything on a pizza and he would eat it it was like oreos ketchup thousand island dressing a cucumber and you know uh, mashed potatoes and he would just fucking eat it all and he just thought that was the funniest thing and like everyone would knew him for that and he wasn't like popular he wasn't Uh like he was a middle ground kid he wasn't like a jock or anything which at my school when i was growing up it was fucking jocks and losers there was no one else There was cheerleaders and then there was the fucking loser girls oh there was definitely clicks in springtown you got like the oh, at least you had more than two yeah it was like the poor kids yeah. uh band jocks cheerleaders like the preppy people the before emos. high school well this and in high school like, uh, high was... school i had clicks. there were clicks for sure but before yeah it was still the same way there was still like groups of people that were like butting heads and hmm. if you didn't wear abercrombie you looked at down upon yep, or like yeah i only bought like one abercrombie shirt so i, I could fit in yeah that i shit think it was like, all my parents could afford i think i even got it at like a thrift store i'm pretty sure yeah it's like it was so weird like it looked so expensive back in the day but now like it's kind of normal price <laughs> yeah oh yeah when like you look at it it's like 20 bucks for a shirt, for a shirt you're like oh, okay. oh that's okay yeah i bought a 20 dollar shirt the other day mm-hmm. it was a it's the Tower Arcana card. Fuck, shirts are like 50 bucks nowadays. Like, you got our Urban Outfitters? Their shirts, like, Those literally, are badass looking shirts, though. I mean, they look cool, but then there'll be, like, some shirts that are just, like, fucking plain white, and it's, mm-hmm. like, $60. I'm yeah. like, hello? hello? <laughs> That's a game, dude. I can play that for <laughs> six months. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know why shirts are so expensive. Clothing does not need to be that expensive. Unless you're using some amazing fabric and doing something fucking sweet to the shirt, don't overprice Even it. Even then, I think it's It should like, not be more than 15 bucks. I really I, don't think shirts should be more than 20 ever. It's all like the appeal. Like all these, say, Gucci and Versace and yeah, yeah. Louis Vuitton stores that are being robbed right now. Yeah. They're are target- they really? Oh, yeah. Oh, like okay. I've seen like videos of like the, a window being broken and like someone literally dragging a coat like clothing rack into the street and running off with it oh my god and people were like ripping it off and but i think it's just all like an effect that we have like their bags there really aren't worth the 12 grand like they don't cost that much to make oh. but it's just like yeah, yeah, yeah the image that we're getting burned in our brain that oh it actually is worth 12 grand yeah what it is like is, it's just it's a like a psychology theory. of your the reflection it, it's a uh, help me out it, it's when you are trying to portray yourself to be someone you're not yeah. necessarily it's it, it's like it's the illusion that you have wealth and wealth means that you have value and we're miss it's a misguided idea that when you have money you are more important to the world mm-hmm. so when you have this fucking bag that's a thousand dollars you have more value Mm -hmm. as a person you should be valued better when realistically a ross bag should hold the same value as Mm -hmm. that other bag because both were made probably in the same place they just got two different icons on them and then just that icon means that you're fucking cool now yeah and it's like you're looked upon that's so stupid i gotta well keep going i think you know the only thing i wouldn't do uh, me personally i don't want to buy walmart clothes they're fucking ugly no they i mean at a point like that yeah it's a different quality because they're just terrible yeah but i'm not going to justify spending three grand on never a pair of flip-flops or yeah my mom shirts. still holds that type of value over things where she sees it and she's like oh man i got these fo- these coach shoes she has coach mm-hmm. shoes um mm-hmm. but like she got them like someone gave them to her when she was really young when she was like oh really young you know like 10 years ago when it was coach was super cool Mm -hmm. and she held those shoes to such a high esteem she was like wearing them in front of other people so she could 
show that she has like a high value oh, like like her mercedes yeah she thinks that her mercedes has like a huge impact on how people see her mm-hmm. granted we don't live in a bad area anymore and yeah. we our house is fair and like her car is nice yeah my mom has a mercedes but the only reason why she bought that car was so she could be seen yeah. as an image yeah 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 and because she like sees a lot of rich people mm-hmm. my mom isn't rich but it's to see her like she's something so she fits in with everybody and i think social media has a big role in that too because people oh, for are sure. like posing with all the stuff and getting oh, likes yeah. and yeah you don't post a picture of yourself crying no. you post a picture of yourself with fucking kevin hart and you're like oh. look at me dude i'm at kevin yeah. hart i'm fucking amazing it's like well you kind of just took a picture here's a a thing on instagram i seen and i was like oh my god it's unbelievable it's only like 15 seconds. It's someone. I'll show you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Good job, guys. What? Bye. This is Karen. Karen's being an ally for Instagram. I'm like, don't be like Karen. Do something. My jaw literally dropped. Li- like, that. she's just pretending to be a good person? Like, literally what just to take a fuck? picture of, like, oh, we're helping this store barricade themselves to not be looted. And then yeah, she, she and then she like, just gets in her car and drives away. Yeah, it's like, how fake are people really? Wow. Yeah, that's like that's like fishing for, like, the attention that yeah. you oh God, didn't do anything. so great for doing that. Oh, my God, when, can, when, I, can I help you guys with the homeless real quick? And she dips the like, spoon in the beans and puts it on one like tortilla and she's like thanks you got that bye and leaves you didn't, you didn't feed the homeless that friday no you didn't do that it's just like you that, can't call it that like seeing that puts like a whole new meaning on social media yeah because it's like yeah because how fake is a lot of the shit that we're seeing like yeah. all this everything is only as real too like, it's only as real as when you hit play or hit record and when you hit stop mm-hmm. it is only as real as that and so just like the question always has to be asked is like what is the context of what i am looking at because that's fucked up but like or that's amazing or whatever mm-hmm. but like was there something before or after? Did she mm-hmm. stay or whatever? And then that lady was like, clearly she left and like, yeah, you know. Got her, her fucking Mercedes. Right. And so we give left. a lot of credit to things, but you know, really you should probably think a little deeper than that. And because it, social media is only as, it, because things are so short, like you're only looking at it for a second, mm-hmm. that's really all you get. You know, so there's way more information than just that little, like, little 14 second clip. And the same with like ads and sponsorship like people out there holding their new like fit drink or mm-hmm. whatever you know they're not drinking that shit they're just getting paid to like promote it oh and yeah yeah it's like no telling what's really in that like you know they're not going to be researching like mm-hmm. i even saw a weird one for this guy who does cosplay mm-hmm. and uh him and his girlfriend were moving apparently and there was boxes and they were like sitting on the floor eating some pizza and there was like the boxes all stacked up around the house but they were all facing towards the camera with a logo on them and i'm like surely not and i clicked on the photo and it popped up like a profile for the company that makes the boxes and they were doing an ad and then you go to like their profile and there's like 70 tags of that photo that they took saying these people are loving our boxes. Oh, my God. And then it was, like, had, like, happy movers. Like, it's wow. just, like, yeah, yeah. are y'all really moving? Or, like, yeah, it's just weird that people can't even fucking move their house without, like, Making trying some grab to, off of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying to get some yeah. money or something. Like, it's just. Yeah, I'd rather insane. you just sell your dick and balls on, pictures of your dick and balls on, on the internet. And I'd have a bit more respect for that. But, yeah, I mean. Everything is is so monetized. Mm-hmm. It's it's like everything is monetized. Everyone's being bought out by whoever. Because that's that, the only thing that makes the world go around. Like that's yeah. the only thing ca- people care about is dollar signs and value with their expensive purses yeah. and shit. Like people think money is well, the, that's <laughs> the new god. Yeah, yeah, it it's is. Like, it solves everything. But, yeah, I mean, it's just. That's uh. Have you seen the Zeitgeist documentaries? Uh. Uh-uh. That do 
we should watch one tonight. Yeah, we can after this. Um, Zeitgeist is one of my favorite documentary series. There's three, mm-hmm. and the we'll watch the first one because that one's fucking amazing. Mm-hmm. But and you'll you'll get <laughs> you'll see like a, a lot in me. Mm-hmm. You're like, oh, this is all like Ronnie. Mm-hmm. It's because I really value those. But um, what is his name? Uh, I forget his name. Uh, Joseph. S- uh, not Joseph Smith. Joseph. I don't know. His name's Joseph something. Mm-hmm. He's a great documentarist he's working on a fourth one right now it's way it's like more like artsy Mm -hmm. and he's being more metaphorical with what he's doing and he's working on a much lower budget Mm -hmm. Um, but he has a team he's working with to do this next uh zeitgeist but basically that's the thing man like that's the root of everything yeah money's the root of all evil that is a hundred percent true when you look at his zeitgeist documentaries Mm -hmm. he's talking about he shows the societies that function um, like America, uh, who is like a open, uh, quote unquote, like accepting society, society mm-hmm. who has like freedom and um, like, a, but with limitations, right? But we still have poverty. We have a fucking ton of poverty in like LA yeah. and New York and Chicago. Dude, Chicago is super, has a ton of homeless. Yeah, it's crazy. Everything's so fucking expensive. Yes. That people are being forced onto the streets because they so, can't pay two grand a month. This, this documentary explains that there is, in societies that have an unequal, um, like a disproportionate mm-hmm. uh, amount of money uh, and acceptance going between peoples, then it creates a distortion within mm-hmm. the society that causes violence, poverty, homelessness, um, you know, crime, a, a tons of things, right? Mm-hmm. So when you look at uh, America, it's it's somewhat, there's like a big middle ground, right? There's a lot of middle class and there's high class and then there's zero class. There's So zero being like the fu- the homeless. Mm-hmm. Then I'm not saying that's what the documentary says, but you know, like they have nothing, right? Mm-hmm. Zero. So they have like nothing, homeless. Then there's middle class. There's almost no gap. There's middle class and then there's the high class, which is like the 1% mm-hmm. or, you know, the 5% or whatever, you know. Uh, I wouldn't consider like my family to be anything but middle class right Mm -hmm. but my there are people that like my wife knows my wife once worked at this job where there were these guys that she handled the money for and they were just like swiping their card at like these steak houses Mm -hmm. or blowing it on like thousands of dollars a night and they didn't even look at their credit cards they were just like eh i'm gonna make it back so they just swipe it and buy hookers and shit and like you know she was able to see the books and was like Mm -hmm. jesus these guys just blow money those guys are like that high class right Mm -hmm. they don't give a fuck in societies like sweden and um like those types of places you can look at how their crime rate is much lower the education system is uh way more equal they're Mm -hmm. smarter they have like better grades overall graduation rate you can see the housing market is like more middle ground there's almost no homelessness the violent le- levels are very low crime in general is very low and a big reason is all because it is a more balanced and equal state mm-hmm. it, is, it is so balanced and that they like everything is cultivated like you know the people are listened to the, it runs in in a society where like change is encouraged Mm -hmm. and that is all because we're they they balance everything out but in the society where everything is like heavily imbalanced and distorted thusly causes people to act out in rage violence crime i mean would you be stealing things if you i'm not talking about the looting but like would you be stealing would you go to walmart and try to steal clothes and food if you had plenty of money to if buy, you it. buy it. Yeah. No, no, you wouldn't. The world isn't made to like for people that work at McDonald's or no. things like that because no. you can't afford rent. You can't get a new car ever. Like you can barely fucking eat. Like, yeah. You, like your head is underwater so fast. Yep. And then to even stay afloat, you got to work yourself to death with three jobs or yeah. four jobs or like. Yeah. They say that we're only most people. It's something like seventy percent of people are only two paychecks away from being flat homeless, mm-hmm. and like that's that means 
look at your think about paychecks. You're only about four thousand dollars away from being completely homeless. Yeah. And we rely. Most people go check to check. Yeah. We're like, oh, like you know, I got a hundred dollars in my bank account, and then it's like, oh, thank God I got paid. I'm okay again. Yeah. You know. But if you don't get that, like currently in the COVID situation, for a while we were terrified that we weren't going to be getting paychecks, and mm-hmm. some people still are not. Yeah. And they're not going like check to check anymore. They're going like, you know, stimulus check to stimulus check. Yeah. And that's mm-hmm. nothing in the grand scheme of things. So, the yeah, for sure, like the monetary system is completely butt fucked. Mm-hmm. And that those documentaries, I highly recommend them. And will break. And he is so fucking smart his book um he has a, an amazing book it's uh mm. the new human rights movement is amazing mm. and he it's a fucking super good book take it take it in slowly it is a very heavy and it's it's like trying to digest a brick it is it's not a big thick book it's it's full of a ton of economic jargon peter joseph peter joseph that's mm-hmm. it he's super fucking smart guy and that book is amazing and he will break down like what it's like to be poor and how to fix it when looking at like an economic standpoint he has an audiobook for it and he mm-hmm. he reads the whole thing he's a oh, cool. fucking smart guy um so check those out and and that documentary series is all made by him and he narrates those too and those are a heavy thing to read or to listen to and watch Mm-hmm. It might take several watches to get through, but you will be smarter for it. That those are those are some of the best do- documentaries out there. Period. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Let's check them out. We can leave it on that note. Yeah. Fucking enlighten yourself. Don't be oppressed. And stand up for what you believe in, man. Better uh, to die on your feet than live on your knees. Uh, listen uh music recommendation now that we're talking about um some heavy shit listen to molotov solution you know like molotov where you light the the uh-huh. the the cloth and you throw the the whiskey bottle and it explodes molotov molotov solution uh their album insurrection that listen to that shit if you're into fucking metal man that's like the perfect album for standing up against uh, oppression What's that Russian band that you like? Oh, Ice Peak. Ice Peak. Listen to Ice Peak. Yeah, they just released a new album too, which is actually really good and actually has a lot to do with oppression. Yeah, check and that how out. terrible Russia is. See? Yeah. So those those are, two. Ice w- Peak. Watch Zeitgeist. There's three different documentaries. There's uh, Zeitgeist. There's Zeitgeist um, 2 and Zeitgeist 3. <laughs> it's Moving Forward is one of them. I think that's the third one. And then the other one is Addendum. I think it's the second one. Or it's like Elabellum or something like that. Anyways, it mm-hmm. it's not the fucking John Wick 3 name, I don't think. But it, it, there's three Zeitgeist documentaries and there's a new one coming. And then he has a book. New Human Rights Movement by Peter Joseph. Fucking amazing book, amazing documentaries, amazing guy. He's working really hard to try to change the world. He has, you know, he works with other people to create a solution. That guy has all my respect for sure. Mm-hmm. And then Ice Peak, Molotov Solution. Yeah, homework. I love you guys. Bye, we love you. Black Lives Matter. <laughs>